Hello, and welcome back to Creepy Cast. This time I am joined by Dart, aka Dark Lord Ferret Sprinkles, whatever name you go by. <laughs> AKA, AKA the weird cousin in the wild thornberries. We also have <laughs> we also have Ryan, aka Shadow Blackheart. Hello, everybody. Greetings, my mortals. <laughs> and we also have Spike, <laughs> aka the the one with the best voice out of all of us here. Um, and hello. But see, he's got the British accent, so he's automatically got like a factor of cool points just from that accent. <laughs> Yeah, but take him out of our context, and he's easily a three. I'm going to give him just three points alone for the accent. Can I get alcohol with this drink, please? Thank you. Oh, yeah, you're... Of a, I keep like, wait a minute, you got to be 21. Nope, that's only over here. Yeah. Uh, although, to be fair, half the people in this country don't really pay much attention to that rule. Uh, present company included. Um, but we're going to ignore that. Uh, now. Uh, I do have several questions. This is going to follow a similar format to what, uh, I've done for CreepyCast in the past. The only difference is the questions that I had prior, well, they led to some interesting conversations, especially about how Scoods got molested by a hamster. Um. What the fuck? (laughs) Watch the first one. It It gets weird. Also turns out. Anymore. Also turns out, Miles's mom used to babysit somebody who ended up being one of the developers for Doom Eternal. I, no, I thought it was from Mortal Kombat. Oh no! Wait, you're right. I thought it was Doom Eternal. My bad. It was Mortal Kombat. My bad. Yeah, it was the. Uh, I thought that was for Sean though. No, that wasn't Sean. That was Miles. Oh, that was Miles. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, let's go ahead and just get right into it. I do have a list on something that a lot of you younger viewers may not be familiar with. It's called... PAPER! (laughs) But... Now, I explained this a little... When the talkies were called color... Were not colored. I hate you, Dart. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) Alright. Now, again, I mentioned this to everybody before the recording started... But these questions are more centered around the creative prospe- uh, creative process in general, not specifically for games, anime, movies, TV shows. This encompasses all of that. So when I ask these questions, it can be uh, video game focused, even a few of these questions are centered around games. But if you have any examples you would like to give regarding a TV show, an anime, what have you, please feel free first one, and I believe I've asked this question before, but I think we went off a tangent that it really didn't get answered in a previous creepy cast. In your own opinions, what series deserves a reboot? And I'm not referring to a remaster or anything like that. I'm talking a full reboot like the Resident Evil 2 style remake. Oh... Uh, okay, so how are we all going to answer this? Like, uh, who's going to go first? Doesn't matter. Just sh- yell shit out. Teen Titans. I want Teen Titans to be remade. I don't want Teen Titans to go. I just want regular Teen Titans. It was so good. I miss it so much. I love you again, Dart. I mean, who doesn't want to see uh, Teen Titans remastered and go back to what, uh, to what it was originally? I can agree. And this is coming from someone who genuinely really dislikes superheroes. I don't like superheroes at all. There's only two superheroes I like generally, and the Teen Titans aren't and on any of those lists. I just like them because they're characters and people instead of gags. I'm actually curious, uh-huh. what is your beef with superheroes? Like, why do you like them? I think uh, it can be boiled down to the Superman. Superman is the epitome of what I hate about superheroes, right? There's so much potential, but it's so wasted. And then it's presented like, oh, it's such a nuanced character. No, he's not! He's He's just super strong. The only weakness he has is a rock from his own planet. And he's portrayed as the most human of us all. Like, yeah, I can see that. 
but he's also a god, so it ruins any humanity he has inherently. Isn't he an alien? Well, he is. Yeah, yeah. He, he's but, an alien, but they basically portrayed him as a god who walks amongst men because of how powerful he is. Yeah. The idea is he is the most human of us all because he cares so much, but it 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 falls so flat because he's literally a god. The only they even say it in one of the uh, Flash comics, and I believe that at the end of time, Flash goes there, and the only thing he sees is a sad Superman. So he's even immortal. You, you know a lot about this guy for somebody is for something that you hate. I used to watch a lot of superhero stuff when I was younger, and I just the only beef I have with Superman as a whole. Out of the entirety of the human populace, this guy, Superman, literally has no mask, his hair is out, everything is there. And then all of a sudden, puts on some freaking Urkel glasses, like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> that is the only beef I have with Superman, just... Okay, yes, he's... Still, Same here. Like, I hate that. Yeah. Like, at least with Batman and Spider-Man, they got a mask, they cover their face. At least with Batman, it's like half a mask. But still, that's not like. It's not. You literally named the two superheroes that I actually like. What? Batman and. I already forgot. Spider Man. Oh, okay. <laughs> see, how, see how good my memory is? That's why I have to write shit down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I still use it. the superhero. Superman model is basically how I feel about all superheroes. But Batman, it's not that I like Batman, it's like I said, I like his villains. Villains are so good. I love Joker. Joker is so good. And I don't don't even start. I know he's a villain, and I get that he's a villain. But you go into things with a certain mindset, and I like him in the mindset that I understand that he's I'm not supposed to idolize him. Well, I might get shot for saying this, but for me, um, Batman's a little repetitive. Like, the movies have just been the same thing over and over again. This is where shit goes south, people, so let's enjoy. I can understand that, because you need something new. With like, I want to see Harley Quinn, not from Birds of Prey, Ugh. but from the Harley Quinn series. Where the animated she is, series. Yeah, the animated series, where she is a bombastic lesbian finding herself without Joker, just fucking up Batman's day. Let's see. Okay. Don't get me wrong about it. Sorry, go. No, you're fine. The only thing that um, I, I, I I'm bad about this because superheroes were never huge in my repertoire when I was younger. But the only thing that I saw was just from a clip that I literally saw off of iFunny or TikTok or what have you. Was it showed Harley Quinn not in full getup, but basically kind of like the attire of like I just woke up. Don't like hairs disheveled and everything like that and she says something along the lines of um why are you helping me i've done everything this terrible to you and batman says i had a bad day once as well harley quinn then replies good guys like you don't deserve bad days i don't know why i don't know what even show that's from but that like stuck with me for as long as it did, and that's, I agree, I love Harley Quinn, not necessarily from the fetishized aspect that she has become, as much as she has, she has definitely become more of a sex icon anymore than she has, basically, as the main villain's punching bag, sadly to say. But Yeah, right. she is a tragic character in that aspect, but a whole, she's fucking insane, and she wasn't insane because... And then Joker came to her life, and the only way she's healthy again is continuing in her insanity, but in a more healthy relationship with Ivy, which is something I like so much. Even though she's still a super toxic villain, she at least has a thriving love life with her girlfriend. Right, alright. Alright, all right, but I'll, 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 I wouldn't say I'll one-up you on this one, but... Regardless uh, whether this could be or will, uh, could, well, well, of course it's not going to be a series anyway. But I would like to see either a spinoff or a reboot of uh, something for uh, Ivy. 
I want to see how uh, see how things go for her. Not okay. Like, yeah, you know what? I think that would be good. Okay. I don't think I've ever heard of that before. I mean, it's freaking Ivy. <laughs> and Ivy. Honestly, I want to see a Beast Boy st- story. That would be interesting. I would like the origin stories for the majority of the Teen Titans. Agreed. Yes, but. We are. Ch- it is true. Aside from the Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze Batman movie, we don't really see too much of an origin story for uh, Poison Ivy. Or at least not one, according to a few of the comic book nerds that come to my shop, uh, say that's not really canon. I was like, okay, dude, I didn't grow up with comic books, dude. I literally lived off video games and horror movies, so sorry. But I would like to see, like, an origin story. I would like to see more origin stories that are done well. Like, even if even if it was just Christopher Nolan doing all these, I would be fine with that. Now, as long as they don't do the same thing they did, I think it was with Val Kilmer's Batman, where they gave the suit nipples for some reason. No. As long, oh, God. As long, no. It was Val Kilmer, right? Or was that Michael Keaton? It was one of those. I don't remember. I don't know. <laughs> All I know is no nipples for the suit. No nipple for the suit because that's just weird. Yeah. All right. Can I quickly just say mm-hmm. la- last thing? They did my boy um, Cyborg dirty with his new redesign. He was perfect in the Teen Titans show. In fact, one of my favorite episodes was a was a uh, uh, Cyborg episode. Of the original Teen Titans? So good. <laughs> yeah, you know. The good one, not go. I've seen a few... I feel like... Now, again, this is just my own personal opinion. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't the finale of the original Teen Titans run... Wasn't that the equip? Wasn't that when Raven uh, pretty much saw the future where she would just destroy everything and Slade? A.K.A. Deathstroke. But... Right, but wasn't that like the end of the series? Then was like basically where it showed her. We'll call it scantily clad. Isn't that where the series ended on that? I can't remember. It's been too long, but I enough hard to rewatch it because Raven sexy. <sighs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, honestly, I can't say for certain. I don't remember myself. Okay. But I would think it'd be at least a little interesting. Yeah. Well, Spike, uh, what about you? Is there any series you would like to see rebooted? No series rebooted. There is one. I'm gonna have to try and look it up because I was like, like adding my two cents on your guys's. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this, so this might be a dead end. Here, but hold on. What? Um, it, what's it called? Two seconds. <laughs> wow, you want a reboot of something you can't even name? Yeah, dude. It's been <laughs> a thought of this. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard this. Thailanders. Thai- Thailanders? Thailanders? Thailand. Thailanders. Yep. Oh, no, I haven't I, heard of it. I have never heard of it. Hang on, I'm weird. Googling. It gets a little weird. I'm not going to lie, dude. But in my opinion, it was a great series. Thailanders show. What is this? How do you spell Thailanders? <laughs> oh, I found it. I found it. Hang on. I, I, I put Thailanders as one word. Hang on. Let me see. What is this? Oh, here's why. It was only in... Looks like it's only in, in uh, the UK. Oh. That's good to know. Oh, wait. No. No, wait. Thailanders is a person. Sure. Do you know what? <laughs> Sure. Wait, what? I can't find shit. Apparently, American Google is different than British Google. I can't find it. That's a good it's a, uh, what, what was I'll, it? I'll be right back. Okay. Sorry? No, so what was the? What was it about? It's more or less, it was about... Um, hold on. It's been a while since I've watched this, but from what I can recall, it was basically about um, how... The Earth basically at one point was a lot uh-huh. of how, how it is now. Um, when the waters 
took over the majority of the island and then it settled mm -hmm. it. it lost history from different things and there was I, I don't know how to explain it. I'm really bad at explaining this. Was it like an alternative history kind of thing? I hold on, I, I can't explain it properly, sorry dude. Give me two seconds, I need to be right back my sincere point. <laughs> <laughs> well, Spike and Dart left. Alright. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to the next question. This is a similar question, but what series, while great, should not get a reboot? You think it's great, but you don't think it should be rebooted. Uh, does it count if it already has been rebooted? I'll allow it. Like, uh, we can go back to what it was, uh, was previously, right? I'll go with that. I'm cool with that. Okay. Okay. Because you know what? I'm going to go back to what Dart said before. Fucking Teen Titans. That shit did not need a reboot because that ended on such a great note with uh, Raven going against her father Trigon. That did not need another reboot. Mm, I agree. The rest of you? Uh, I think um, the current running series of Darth Vader comics. They don't need a reboot. Keep them going. I like how they go. They're going. Are they not printing anymore? Or are they stopped? Or they're... Uh, no, I just, in general, they're good, and I don't want them to stop, and I don't want them to be rebooted to make them worse. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Spike. There's nothing that can come to mind. I haven't really noticed a lot of series or films like that, to be honest. Fair enough. Alright, we'll just skip to the next question. Alright, this is going to be... A little bit different, but again, this one encompasses all of, again, gaming, uh, movies, TV shows, anime. What tropes should be forgotten? Now, when I say tropes, uh, for those who don't know, uh, it, like when you think of 1970s, 1980s horror movies, you automatically think of dumb bimbos that are topless getting slashed while constantly tripping over random crap. Uh... Stuff like that, where it's just cliche. What tropes should be eliminated? Um. Okay, I'm just gonna say this, basically. Um. I would definitely say, kind of keep like the trope where, uh, or at least to a certain extent, where the person in like horror movies is like falling down or some shit like that tripping over some shit i'd say keep that but limit that to a uh to a minimum because that gets overused way too much okay so you're not saying calling for a necessary elimination just reduction yeah just reduction and i'd say at least let the um villain or the um killer at least have a couple of wins in their own movie <laughs> I think they get a few kills and I think I count that as a win. No, I mean like killing off everybody instead of just like escaping the killer and just uh what? Coming back with the uh same killer with different people except for one. Alright. But so you know there's a few movies that are like that, right? Where everybody dies? No, I No, I haven't seen anything like that yet. Oh boy, do I have some recommendations for you, good sir! And just for context, everybody, <laughs> I am, I wouldn't say I'm all that big into horror flicks and shit like that, but I do enjoy them. It's just that I don't really watch a, a lot of movies. Fair enough. Netflix is getting no business from Ryan. I, I, I still <laughs> watch a lot of shit. I'm watching fucking Supernatural. <laughs> okay. All right, you know what? Normally, I won't jump in on my point of view on this just because I'm the host. But I hate the fact that every supernatural entity is drop-dead gorgeous. Oh. Like Vampire Diaries, Supernatural. Everything there that is just the embodiment of evil, corruption, and decay still has an hourglass physique 
at least C cups or a six pack. <laughs> the embodiments of decay, death, and corruption should not be hot. I, I want to see a villain that's fucking ugly. I want to see. I want to see that at least once, where the villain is actually somebody who would not be an option for a bedmate. We'll call it. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll give you that. I'll give you that. All right. What about the other two? Is there anything you want to see eliminated for troops? I have two of them. Okay. <laughs> First of all. I saw this a lot a few months ago when the third episode of Hell the Boss came out. And I genuinely hate this trope. It's the trope of... It wasn't present in the episode. Fandom really wanted it to happen. That's why I hate it. The trope of person in toxic relationship get saved by someone who's all, who's also in love with them into good relationship. That's bad. That's a bad probe. I hate that trope. Okay. You just want it to be more realistic, or...? I just want to stop seeing that trope at all. You know? Fair enough. Get toxic relationships happen, but man, the, the rest that suck. Ah... Uh, all right, Spike. Or I'm sorry, no, Dar. You had two. Dar, you had two. Yeah. Uh. The trope of I don't hit women. It's death. Is also bad. Uh, I don't like. It. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. I can I can actually see that one. Uh. Yeah, those are the two I don't like. Spike. Hate to say this again. I can't really think of any. Sorry, dude. <laughs> You're good. It's like what? One a.m. for you there right now. Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll count your lack of ability to answer simple questions for you being tired. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'll take> <laughs> Alright. This is the last simple question. What is your opinion of attempting to merge genres? Such as, example, trying to have a horror comedy or a sci-fi love story or something like that, where they're trying to take two very distinct and very different genres and try to mesh them together. What's your thoughts on those? So, Stupid. Vito, you know I was actually doing that up until a certain date that I think you also know that I scrapped it because right. of what happened on that. Right. I'm just asking your opinion. I'm not saying they're good or bad. I just want to get your input. Well, I think it would have been good, you know, if the game wasn't terrible. But, you know, we'll never know. For right now, at least. <coughs> Fair. Ryan? I think the attempt of just... Um... What? Connecting different genres together, like a rom com or a type of horror flick with something else. I gotta say, you either gonna make it a better story or you're not gonna make it work at all. Because there's, it's different when you try to mix uh, genres up together. Sometimes they don't really clash as well. It's gotta be something good that can relate to everybody who at least watches it maybe once or twice give it a good you know real but then again that's just my thought on it do you have an example of a show movie or something like that where it worked um i couldn't say of how it worked but i remember seeing this movie called jexy right jexy it's yeah I can't remember. I can't remember. It was a dude who was like I forget. Um, I forget the uh, name of the guy who played him. Adam Devine. But, um, yeah, I think so. The uh, guy who played uh, I think the lead in Pitch Perfect or whatever. Uh, I literally just the, googled uh, it and saw his name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I think 
comedy he like overtook the, like the romance because he met a girl in that movie that he was really falling for but mostly the comedy took over because of like what he was doing with his fucking phone that's what I'm saying it's gotta blend well if you're gonna make it good you're gonna it's got a blend well if you're gonna make it good enough. There was actually another movie that came out before Jexy that it's very close to what it would actually happen with. I think it's a movie called Her, just H E R, but it's the same premise. A guy gets this essentially Siri and a artificial intelligence in your phone and what have you. But it shows the process of him actually falling in love with this character. It was literally entirely fictional, but still is actively communicating with him. And right. this go, it's just a pure sci-fi romantic comedy. Or not even romantic, just a pure romance slash sci-fi. But it gets... Um, it gets fucking sad. <laughs> like, there's like no comedic moments, or at least none that I can remember. But it is a very. I liked what they were doing. I feel like they did a great job on it. It deserved to be more popular than what it was. But the main issue is <laughs> that's probably where this world's gonna go. <laughs> like Siri 2.0 all of a sudden has full blown conversations with you and people just completely isolating themselves romantically just to have a relationship with this uh, virtual intelligence. But that's just my point of view on it. That's fine. Right. Uh, Spike? Honestly, no, I can't think of the films, but all I remember is clips and stuff like that of the film, but it just hasn't, the ones I've watched just hasn't went well. It's always ended up in cringe, or it's just not worked to the point where it just made the film stupid. It it hasn't went well for me, at least, at least watching stuff like that. Fair enough. Alright, just moving on a little bit, because we're actually, I was expecting to fly through these questions and we're already at half an hour <laughs> then, well, then that's good if you're getting good content eh, I'm getting content we'll see if it's good um, <laughs> oh fuck you <laughs> I mean I can leave you know oh no you actually provide kind of wounded my pride a little bit <laughs> alright so moving on to the next question this is where the questions get a little bit more I'm going to say this is where showing your work is required, children. So, next question is, what makes a protagonist enthralling? What is the best way to make the hero of the story actually engaging with the audience watching? All right, dibs, I go first. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. I was literally talking about this to myself. Last night. Okay. And, you know, you may think, a lot of people think this isn't a good answer, but honestly, I think it's the best answer to this question. Anakin Skywalker. So, Anakin Skywalker is a really, really good protagonist. It's a Greek tragedy, in my opinion, where everything goes wrong in the end. It's very hard to look at it in a way it's hard to see how he goes through it if you don't put everything into context I don't think a lot of people do man loses his entire life to the Jedi Order and then he loses it again when the one person who says he can help betrays him and takes everything all over again he is betrayed twice by Jedi and the Sith. And it's just, he can't keep going. The entire Vader thing is just his death wish. He constantly throws himself into action, into combat, and if he dies, he dies. I like that about him so much. 
I think Dart's got a camera in my room right now because that's actually going to be a question down this list that he just answered. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's a later question, but all right. Oh. Fair enough. You're good. Uh, Ryan. Okay, well, I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> Rude! <laughs> what makes a protagonist enthralling? What needs to be done for the main hero of the story to draw people in? Draw people in? Keep their attention, so to speak. Um, I mean, we got, there's a different demographic. People honestly think just good storyline or explosion. You know, Michael Bay. <laughs> But no, <laughs> but no. Honestly, like I said from earlier, it's got to be a good storyline because good storylines are what's really going to have me really engage into a movie and/or series that I'm watching. It can't just be like this is what happens. This is what needs to be done. It can't be like what a bunch of different ideas compiling together. That is just. It's all over the place. Stop insulting my writing ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> okay. sorry, You're good. but the one thing I guess I look for more is in character development. Now you got a uh, fucking camera in here, man. That's another question. <laughs> Y'all are psychics. I just like Star Wars. Sorry. What? Brian literally just took both of my things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Fuck. So, Spike, you want to come up with the next one, or do you want me just to move on along? Let's move on before I try to think of something else, and it's not going to be right. <laughs> yeah, but you can agree or say something different. Right, to be rightfully honest, I do completely agree with you, Ryan. Both of those factors actually is something that I have both in different uh, series and films I've seen, both of those have been the main part of it. Um, it's when you actually look at a character and see his past or who that character actually is to intrigue you to want to know more to see what he's going to do next is what I think is actually one of the major parts of it. Right, right. That was actually pretty well said. I That actually kind of brings me back to what... Uh... I think on the second creepy cast, on how I like how uh, I can't remember that Vito has actually said something about the manga of Tokyo Ghoul and how they explain more in depth about the Kagune and everything else in their uh, in their little manga series. Mm -hmm. Right. That is that is there is not just the Kagune, but it goes into more detail on the four types of Kagune. Right, right, right. And that's the kind of thing that I like. As long as it goes into detail and actually kind of draws me in, I, that's something I'm really going to like. Have you not read the manga? Nope. <laughs> well, I know what I got to get you for your birthday. I'll, I'll make sure stuff by the shop. <laughs> yeah, I just hand you like 14 volumes of Tokyo Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, just because you and I both are, uh, God, I am going to butcher this name. Please forgive me. Sui Ishida. Sui Ishida. The writer and artist for the manga and the writer for the Tokyo Ghoul animated series. Um, we're both at least massive fans of his work, or at least the one published work he's done. Technically, too, if you count Tokyo Ghoul Re as a another piece of work but i fall that under chronologically one story being told but right. but well, the one thing i'll say regarding that is with how the manga because i've read all of tokyo ghoul the manga itself the first i think it is 14 volumes of the original tokyo ghoul manga covers up to the end of tokyo ghoul a which is technically the second season which uh, spoiler alert for anybody watching who's not seen Tokyo Ghoul. First off, shame on you. Um, but at the end of it, uh, <clears throat> have you not seen it, Dart? <clears throat> Should I not reveal anything? 
No, it's fine. <laughs> Are you? Do you? Oh, let me ask this. Are, do you intend to watch it? Um, I don't know. Okay, then I'm watch going. It, then, I, then I'm going to bite my tongue. I'm going to bite my tongue. So essentially, the watch it, damn it. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Uh, also, don't play the game. That was just a terrible game, in my opinion. Um, but the first 14 volumes of Tokyo Ghoul essentially cover the first two seasons. So Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul A, uh, the first two seasons of the show, are encompassed all throughout the 14 volumes uh, in the first run of Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul Re is actually its continuation because between Tokyo Ghoul A and Tokyo Ghoul Re, there's a three-year gap, I do believe, or at least according to the manga, because I am currently reading Tokyo Ghoul Re, the manga. Um, but the amount of... Not stuff they got incorrect but the stuff they left out that could have been very 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 um enthralling it's especially for me uh that they left in the manga that i think should have been in the anime series because it would have been just so good there was a lot of plot twists in the manga that were not in the anime like for example this is not a major spoiler dart what i'm about to say this literally is a person you meet in the very first episode ryan hey. yes you remember rize right oh fuck yeah i love rize well did you know that she actually is still alive I did not figure she was actually still alive. I mean, okay, here, I've he, seen here's the thing. Anime and everything, but I just I thought she was completely dead after the whole right. You know, right, right, right. Yeah. Oh wait, we get this is the first episode. You're fine, but here's the thing. In the manga, this is not in the anime, so I'm not technically spoiling anything because it never shows up in the anime. But in the manga, um, oh crap, my brain is just turning off. Um. Ryan, help me out here. Who is the tall, stoic guy that works on Teku? Jimmy. Uh, I would say you're either. I can't remember the old man's name. No, it's but it's not it's not the old man. Yomo. It's not the old man. Yomo. Yes, Yomo. Yomo actually has her body that has been cloned and is now just a feral beast. Wait, what the? F Seriously? Yeah, this is in the manga. And it is not in the anime. And that is one thing I wanted to be involved in there. That would have been just so good. Mm. Well, shit. I know. I'm, I'm going to get you the freaking box collection of Tokyo Ghoul Man for your birthday, man. <laughs> Alright. I'm, I'm down for that. <laughs> Fair enough. I forgot what the original question was. Um... Oh. Next question. Next question. Unless... <laughs> Spike, you wanna oh, Spike, you wanna put your two cents in for a question I forgot I asked? Uh no, I already did. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. Okay. I just agreed with Ryan practically. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Alright. Alright. This one's definitely delving more into the video game side to it. Should the player be responsible for the protagonist's skills? And what I mean by that is you'll see a lot of these horror and action games where you are just either a super trained uh, marine or something like that where you have essentially the training skills of a god kind of thing. Should that be put into better perspective, not necessarily better perspective, should that be looked at closer to get it to where it's less of a power trip? For the player, essentially, I'm controlling somebody who has the abilities of somebody I can never have. Um, or should we just simply just move on to somebody who's a little bit more average Joe? Well, maybe we should think more of making better characters instead of, here's an insane god with unlimited training, go shoot people. <laughs> That's what I mean. Is uh, I'm going to start on that. Yes, so, different person, please. No Mr. Shooty Man with black hair or brown eyes. I mean, because we all know how some people get when they're controlling a person who's, like, technically OP. Or some other type of bullshit. You know what I mean? OP for real life. 
Oh, Opie for real. <coughs> Chris <Okay>. Redfield. <coughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but no, for real though, I do agree with her. I do agree with her. Spike. Sorry. Um. Sorry. <coughs> well, great contribution, Spike. I'm drinking. Okay. <laughs> okay, hang on, wait, 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 wait. This determines how much crap I give Spike. What are you drinking? Uh, actually, you can't give me crap. It's I can never pronounce this properly. I just call it rain. Regine. Oh, rain. Regine. Oh, rain. The he's talking about the energy drink. It's spelled R E I G N. So rain. Yep. Oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've had I rain. told you, man. Those things are better than monsters. It's not working. What do you mean it's not working? <laughs> it's not working. I dude, I've had Nas, I've had Monster, I've had uh, Rain. Okay, okay. And what else was there? I can't, I can't remember what the other energy drink was. Uh, Rock Stool, Rockstar, G Fuel, Bang, Rockstar, Bang. That's what it was. Rockstar and Bang. Okay. I just didn't have G Fuel. Okay. The, okay, here's the thing. This happened like a, a conversation just between me and Spike a couple weeks ago. Maybe even longer than that. I can't remember. But he was saying he's drinking Monsters. It's like, dude, that shit is so bad for you, man. Pick up either a Bang, a Rain, or a G Fuel, which uh, G Fuel is my preferred choice, but that's just me. Uh, the reason I said that is because of two reasons. One, no sugar, no calories, and no artificial flavoring or color so it looks just like water so automatically uh you're not gonna get kidney stones as bad compared to monster which is just pretty much cement mix for your kidneys but it still tastes better <clears throat> oh i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna just fly over the atlantic and just kick your ass for saying that um mm -hmm. <laughs> all right but the second reason i was telling to get on that is because Monster has about 76 milligrams of just caffeine in it. Bang, Rain, and G Fuel have 300 milligrams of caffeine. They are, they work better. It's just they don't have, they just don't have a hard crash. And that's another reason why I like it. Oh. Um, right, sorry. Uh, to the original <clears throat> question. Yes. Uh, can you repeat it for me, sorry? You're fine. I remember hearing what you guys were saying about I just can't remember what the actual question was. The actual question was, should the player be responsible for the protagonist's skills? Essentially, the whole, uh, you play as a super heavily trained marine or what have you. Or is that just completely too much of a separation to where you could play as an average Joe and kind of be more uh, immersed into this world because you can kind of relate to this person better? See, no... If you play it as like a super soldier, you get this sense of you got. I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna destroy everything. And I'll come out fine. But when you're actually playing as just a normal protagonist, it gets a little bit more challenging. It gets a little bit more interesting because it's showing that the player, whoever you're playing as, has more of a skill than oh, I'm a um a fucking warhead on uh, on legs. If that makes any sense. I love how Spike mentioned previously he may not have much to contribute to the conversations, but if I give him just a simple topic, he'll just go. <laughs> See? I told you. Rain works. Alright. No. Alright, Dar, did you answer the question? I do not recall. Yeah, yes I did. Okay. Move on to the next one. This one is one of the questions that um, Dar is going to have fun with, because he pretty much answered it a little bit. In order for an antagonist to be labeled as a good villain, should they be understood? Like, you understand their struggle, you understand why they're doing what they're doing, or is it better just for, I am bad, so I want to destroy everything, and they're just hated? So I hmm. think they need to be understood. I agree with that. Because... Yeah. You understand Anakin's struggle as he drives himself to the dark side. He cares so much about his friends, about his family. The only reason why he ever did any of that 
was because of his wife. He thought his wife was dying. That's why he betrayed the council. That's why he betrayed his best friend. Because his wife was in trouble. If his wife was in trouble, he wouldn't have done any of this. His kids wouldn't have to be labeled as sons and daughters of a war criminal. A monster. His wife would still be alive! <laughs> well, apparently, Dart's having a <sighs> rain. And I can... I, I really like this character. He is the chosen one, and I really like him a lot. Alright. Well, hothead with a lightsaber is what I would call him, but anyway, running away now. <laughs> I will find you, Spike. <laughs> I'm not gonna add anything else to that. I'm just gonna find you. I'm, and I'm just gonna hide. I I know Dark doesn't know where I live, so I'm just gonna stay in my house. <laughs> I mean, technically, I've been to your place. I cannot remember how to get there. I already forgot. I mean, you've been, you, I mean, like, you've been to my place, you just haven't been inside. Yeah, I, I, uh, no offense to you whatsoever, bro. I mean, you're one of my best friends. I don't want to go in your house because nine times out of ten, your girl's there and she scares me. <laughs> she's just, like, hiding. Not, and the, trust me, she's not here during the week. She's not here during the week. I don't, it, it, it doesn't matter. She will pick up my scent when she does go over there like the tall fat one was here where is he <laughs> you know she actually just told me something not too long ago what up but she said just wait until she sees you again what, what, what did i do <laughs> nothing. I, I did nothing. nothing i am i think i think i think she just wants to mess with you <laughs> she's doing a very good job of it <laughs> no, literally, here's the standing. I don't know why I am scared of this five foot nothing girl, but she literally has the energy of baby from the devil's rejects, and it scares me. No, this, no, like, literally, she, okay, she reminds me a lot of the cosplayers on TikTok who are literally like, oh, I have a normal face, then the music drops and it goes heavy metal, and they just got, like, all the skull paint, I think it's, what is his name, Dark Corruption... Uh, there's a bunch of them actually, but they like I imagine like that. Like the second she, second she's with you, she's chill, she's cool. I assume. Whenever she sees me in my head, I just see the neon paint glow underneath her skin, and just like I will destroy the very tall fat man. I don't know. That's just my, that's my tangent on your girlfriend, Ryan. Sorry. Don't don't now you good. Don't don't show <laughs> don't show her this video, please. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm not. Unless it's gonna be that funny. No, I'm not. God damn me. it! Oh no, wait. I'm never funny. So we're good. There you go. You're safe. Yep. Uh, Spike, you got anything to add after my tangent? All we need to do is make this video extremely funny, and then Vo is scared. I like this idea. I, I do. I truly do. Oh shit. Yeah, you... So I got a joke for you guys. Oh, f You wanna hear? Fuck. You all are gonna lose your DM, or at least one of them. <laughs> I will be on an episode <laughs> of Snapped. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. I actually always tell a certain joke whenever I'm watching a movie. And it's a stupid joke. Oh, we might as well hear it. Um... Oh dear Ryan, friend of mine, please make sure that they bring orchids to my funeral as opposed to roses. Alright, are you ready? Alright. Two asylum patients are sitting there. One night, they decide, you know what? Let's get out of here. They work really hard. They finally break out, get up to the roof. They see a bunch of other roofs stretching far across the horizon, all the way to freedom. One of them, ready, runs up, jumps, makes it, no problem. The other one, nope, too scared, doesn't want to do it. The first one says, hey, I got this flashlight. I'll shine the light, so you, and it'll create a beam so you can walk across the beam. And the second one says, what, you think I'm crazy? I'm halfway across, you'll just turn it off. I've heard this before. <laughs> <laughs> All right. it's, it's the Joker's joke from a killing joke. 
That's probably where I heard it from. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, you know what? Screw it. Dark got me thought thinking about this. I got another insane asylum patient joke. Guy is walking. <laughs> yeah, we're going off on a random tangent. I know. Uh, guy is walking home from work, and he passes by the insane asylum just on the outside of the gates. The gates uh, have been boarded up uh, to where the patients can't slip through. He hears over the fence, 13, 13, 13, just oh, yes. constantly repeating back and forth, or just constantly repeating. He goes like, what the hell? He tries to find a knot uh, in the, like a hole in the wall to peek through. He finds one, goes to peek, and something pokes him in the eye like a sharp stick. He's like grimacing in pain, and then all of a sudden he hears, 14, 14. <laughs> oh, that's always gold. I've heard it a thousand times, but it's so good. <laughs> I don't know why I love that joke. Okay, that, honestly, I'm just gonna say that kind of reminds me of like this voiceover thing about a deer. Like, and I know this is going to be like uh, hurtful to some other uh, viewers, considering how they love animals. Mm -hmm. But there was this video I came across that my brother had showed me about like five maybe six years back and there was this uh dude was voicing over and of course it's got some some language in it but um the deer like just attacks a dog when it when it sees it just randomly and the fuck the fucking dude who's voicing over the uh the deer he's going fuck game and i'm just like fuck game fuck game or whatever I'm laughing my ass off. He goes, 12, 12, 12, suck a 12, 12. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. If, uh -huh. if, if you don't believe it, if you don't believe it, no, here, hang on. No. I will, I will, I will link it to you. I, I, believe, I believe it. I'm just confused. Yeah, no, wait, what? I got, that's what I'm saying. I will link it to you. If I find it, I will fucking link it to you. Please do. So I can explain to the three people that watch this video what you're talking about. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I just got to fucking find it. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Moving on to the next one. Uh, God. My vision is terrible. I'm re Yes, I'm reading off paper, but my vision is absolutely terrible. Well, that's the reason why we I want to need glasses. I am wearing glasses, thank you very much. Oh, no. Yep. I just found it. <laughs> Send it in link and I'll play it for the people. Why are you laying down for? Dance, you fine. What? Fuck you just say to me? I ain't say nothing, dog. The fuck you just say to me, dog? Hey, hey chill, don't run, bitch. Chill. Fuck wrong with you, nigga. Fuck ass, little punk ass bitch. Ow, I'm the shit. fucking shit, nigga. I'll beat the fuck out you. Fuck gang, nigga. Fuck ah. gang, bitch. Fuck ah. gang, nigga. Pop, pop, kid, bitch. Twelve. Ah. Twelve. Twelve, nigga. Twelve. Twelve. Yeah, I showed that motherfucker a little thing or two. Here's the next thing. This one's a little bit different. Should the player? There it is. All right. Okay. Should the player be the one to determine who is the protagonist and antagonist? Essentially, what I mean by that is, should the should the game itself be so open ended that the characters or the player's choices in the game literally set who is the good guy and who is the bad guy? Because a lot of games are very linear. This is definitely the bad guy. This is definitely the good guy. You follow this pattern here. Bad guy gets defeated. Roll credits. Should that okay. be an option to allow the player to essentially make whoever they want be the main villain of the story through their choices in game? Okay, so I have something about this that I thought of. Okay. Okay. But something about in The Last of Us 2. I never played it, but I definitely did see some things where I thought, then what is the point of the rest of the game? When Ellie and What's Her Face are fighting, and then you suddenly switch to What's Her Face, and you know, you go through another half of the game trying to make sure they're alive, and then you go back to that fight. And you're playing as what's her face instead of Ellie trying to survive. I like that, 
but if you failed as what to face, I think you should have just gotten a game over, you win, Ellie Ellie killed her Cory. Yay! Instead of just a game over, you lost. I have not played The Last of Us Part 2 just because I've heard several spoilers already, so might as well just wait on that, but the I get where you're coming from. I like the idea. The In my head, though, hearing that kind of makes me not want to play The Last of Us even more, or at least number two, just because it feels like if I'm, again, I could be imagining it completely different. Um, but it just imagine, like, the game is trying to force you to feel sympathy for the other person. Kind of referring back to one of the original questions, should the antagonist be understood? I feel like that was a cheap way to go about doing something like that. To me. Yeah, I can to me. there. Okay. I mean, it was an, an entire other half of the game, but you still have to win as that as what's her name right what about the other two here what do you think uh, uh oh okay I'll go I guess I'll go um <clears throat> honestly yeah I do think that the player should have the chance to choose who is the villain or who is the hero I mean cause I mean going back at it I did kind of like how um, I know this is supposed to be like linear like uh, for an example uh, Infamous Second Son mm -hmm. you can choose Delson to be either a hero or the villain either way it's still going to end up uh, either way this uh, ending is still going to end up you fighting this chick named Augustine whether you're supposed to play the hero route or the villain route you get two different fucking endings and shit like that. I know it's like what you said before is like, this is the bad guy, this is the good guy or some shit like that, but I do feel like the player should have free reign over uh, who is the villain and who is the uh, protagonist. But yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> Spike? Okay, I mean, my opinion is, because like after hearing you guys, it's kind of changed. At the first, I thought no. I thought it, it. To be honest, it would cool to be having that option, but it also overkill it. Well, I mean, it can overcomplicate the game in a certain sense that you would pick who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. I mean, it depends on the storyline, to be honest. Of and it also depends on the game. But eh, the way you honestly think they should have the option in some games, yes, and others, you know, depends on the circumstance, honestly. If that means any sense as well, my apologies. Can you give us an example? I'll take that as a no. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think, not that I can currently think of. You're okay, man. Don't worry about it. All right. I think I'm going to start selecting less questions now because we've already been going for over an hour. All right. <laughs> I'm going to pick the better question just so we can move on. Because some of these are kind of meh. All right. From this point on, we're in the next category. The first one was just simple questions. The second was de delving more into character individual aspects for different uh, games, uh, books, what have you. This one's going into more of the mechanics side to it. What makes a sequel a success or a failure? What is that determining factor that can determine whether or not a sequel is just as good, if not better, than the original? This can be answered in many ways. Does it continuously build on the world? Is there any improvement in gameplay? Is that annoying little mini game that you hated still there? Okay, so you're saying it would take those changes to a sequel to make it better. Uh, those and a lot of others. Just those in general. Okay. Uh, okay. For me, I guess it's... Um, say this character has, like, a child, right? 
and you're you're basically going through the story of the person who is um or is like what having these hardships or blah blah and all this and shit and i think it would be cool or i think it would be a good thing to see not only the story continue but like the uh but this time it's the story of their child that continues on like like uh say their legacy kind of like how i thought about when i watched the movie logan and logan dies in the movie but um we're not gonna see the uh chick who uh we're not gonna see the girl who uh did you just call an eight-year-old girl a chick well i'm sorry i'm messing up my words today okay (laughs) god damn (laughs) (laughs) but the girl who um the girl who uh, has Logan's DNA in it, or in her. Why I say it now? I'm a dumbass. You just triggered a whole slew of people with that statement, sir. Yes, 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 I did. I am sorry, folks. <laughs> Don't come after me. <laughs> the problem is, you're the more popular YouTube channel compared to me, so hopefully nobody <laughs> from your channel sees this. Yeah. <laughs> Judging by the view, but, uh, judging by the views, I know that's that's the case. But yeah, honestly, I would like to see a continuation, different storyline, same person, but to see how their hardships will go. I honestly would like to see that. That would be a good thing to see. Okay, the question was, what makes the sequel a success or a failure so (laughs) you're okay you're good (laughs) i like the story you gave but it didn't answer the question shut up hang on uh that reminds i gotta play the clip of uh from um billy madison like at the guy at the end like mr madison what you just said in no way answered the question but like goes on the spiel like right at the end goes and may god have mercy on your soul (laughs) Oh, fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, technically, it does. Technically, he said at the end that it depends on... Sorry, I'm zoning in and out. But it technically depends on the backstory, didn't you say, right? Yeah. Of that character, yeah. So that technically does answer the question, actually, Vito. Oh, thank you! Oh, you want to... Did you just, um, actually... The podcast? Did he just go (laughs) British Karen? (laughs) Go... Right, yes! <laughs> Jax is now going to want some of those uh, grenades you're going to be making as Derelith. <laughs> um, actually, Mike. Oh my no, Barry, no, Barry, have Derelith hand uh, Jax some fucking grenades and I'll make sure he throws it. <laughs> Jax has more possible reach. That's for sure. Do you know what? Maybe if I make one and it doesn't blow up, or if I hand somebody it, it doesn't blow up in a damn hand. When will you make mustard gas? I am calling a no on that one. (laughs) I will allow you to blow shit up. I will even allow you to try to make napalm. But must any kind of aerosol gas... No. No. You already have assets. You already have like several spells that could do that. I know actually you, Dura, aka Dart, has that option at later levels. But well, I want non magical gas. So is that, you know. Oh, so you I want the. Watch... You want the Taco Bell gas. Yeah, I want Honestly, to watch Orc's faces melt. Honestly, I'm scared. If we ever give Dart that kind of power, he's just going to use it on all of us. Oh, it's not even a... It's not going to be a gift. It's Dart's choice what spells uh, Dura gets. Yeah. But that's the thing... I know, but that's the thing I'm scared of. Like... (laughs) Giving him free random something like that, that scares me. I just love the fact that... uh, No, go ahead. I was going to say, he's going back to the thing where we can pick the villain or the good guy. Yeah, that's not so cool. 
<laughs> just the Dura's the bad guy, just blending in with all the others. <laughs> I mean, right. it's really a matter of perspective. Are you part of the orc tribe she's within, or? I mean, here's the thing. D and D kind of has a blurry line between who's good and who's bad, especially considering a lot of D and D games go murder hobo with all their party. So <laughs> that could be an option. I mean, technically, anything you guys want to do in D and D, up to a point, I will allow. Up to a point. But my point of like, nope, I'm calling out there. I'm not letting you do that. That's pretty high. Like, you would have to do some major... That has been some major dark shit for me to say, oh, hell no, I'm not letting you do that. Adults are to <laughs> never <laughs> give dark free reign. Never I give dark free reign. Crossing that line. <laughs> I've only... I've only had to say no to one of you guys in... Uh, actually, it wasn't even in D&D. &D, it was in Elysium. I've had to say, nope, not doing that. No, and it wasn't even in game. Uh, Sean asked me, I can't remember what he what he asked me, but I was like, "Hey, could such and such and such do yada yada yada?" I was like, "Nope, I'm calling that there. Nope, I'm nipping that in the bud. Nope." And I feel bad. I can't remember what it was, but that, there's only been one case where I put a stop to it. The rest of it, you guys are free to do what you want. I mean, freaking uh, trigger warning for a word I'm about to say here, but Dart in the first campaign, you raped a drow. <laughs> Mind you, I want to. Ex I'm not going to go into full detail on that just because. He liked it. He liked it. And this is a common debate that we are having, everybody. This is why I'm scared of Dart. We're all scared of Dart! <laughs> Especially whenever he's a DM. No, I just I remember what he did to Red in that hotel room. Yes! That was tame. Actually, compared to some of the crap Dart pulled in my first D&D &D campaign, yeah, that was fairly tame. I don't care if it was fairly tame or not. He was attempting to make sure it looked like he was getting it on with me. And who kissed who? <laughs> Fuck who you! Who kissed who? Sundere to the end, huh? I am not a Sundere! <laughs> Bullshit! <laughs> if Kevin never came back, he would just immediately- he wouldn't be surprised, because he's only- Kevin better fucking come back, jackass! No, no, I was about to say, I love that you emphasize the word if. Yeah, if. It's a very- I don't know if I'm allowed to say on my visa. Um... <laughs> I'll, I'll- I'll tell you what, I'll allow you to say where you went, but that's it. Uh... Um, 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 <laughs> Never mind. Um, Never mind. I mean, it's not wait, something we can take into character. Okay, so the swords. Okay. Uh, in case the two of you just need to recap, <coughs> the Sullens is an area outside of Elysium where it's essentially a Mer like a Bermuda Triangle type of situation where people go in, but if they stay there more than a few days, they just cut all communicate and they just they just disappear kevin got sent there to see what's up i want to go there uh you're oh you should have yeah no it's funny actually because as i was being quote unquote called to do that a mr someone wouldn't get the fuck out of my truck i had to pull <laughs> with him not naming names <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> I had to get them for him to get the fuck out. <laughs> yep. Louis is a cat, and you're just gonna have to deal with his cat mannerisms. And if he wants to sleep somewhere, he's sleeping there. <laughs> okay. That also includes Ryan's room. Anyway. Fuck you. <laughs> no, that's the other way around. This is not this is not the roast Ren session. Fuck you. <laughs> Nope, that's just gonna... No, it's officially become the Roast Jacks session here before too long. <laughs> Alright. Let's go ahead and move on. Alright. Um, okay, this one actually will fall a little bit into Elysium, believe it or not. Regarding character classes 
in RPGs such as, you know, Barbarian, uh, Cleric, Monk, what have you, just the different uh, classes you can select in RPGs, does more options like that mean it's going to be a better experience? I can actually answer this. Oh shit, Spike, go first! Okay, right, in my opinion, no. Because as much as you can do more with that, as much as you have all these abilities to do it, if obviously you give the class a good amount, but when you start overwhelming that class with so many abilities, it loses track of the actual class, and you end up having to pick one side or second. It's actually similar to the one I have recently picked, which is the Artificer. I didn't know he had this many stuff, and it, it is kind of overwhelming. Right. But, to be honest, it did, again, I'm kind of going back to what I'm saying, but it does add more greater stuff to what it, the class is. So, yes, I'm now. Now, um, hang on there, Spike. What you're describing is actually feature bloat, not what you're talking about as classes. Explain. Feature bloat is when you have too much choices in a certain class. In your case. So you can do all these things, but you don't really make a solid choice because there's too much to choose. It's like something that this is something super controversial. Something binding of Isaac has. Where it's just too ma many items. To the point where why <laughs> even bother? Anyway. I agree wholeheartedly with that. I agree too. I'm not gonna now, lie. In uh, classes, I can't, can't think of anything better than that. I can agree with you to an extent, but they have to be interesting. Like they have to have some sort of spin on them. Like the artificer, yes, there's too much going on, but engineering as a class is interesting. Maybe mm -hmm. instead of having an all-encompassing artificer, have an engineering, a alchemist, and whatever. You know, like a military engineer or whatever to make all that stuff. Like a subclass, yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. And to be honest, actually, I do agree with that. Um, Artificer is kind of broken down like that. <coughs> like, I like how we're focusing on one class. It's not, it's, I'm not doing this by, uh, by any means. It's just that's the one that I'm most commonly on, and that's the one that's currently on my mind. But, yeah, no, it is, it is broken down, believe it or not, into more. So there's actually more stuff that you can do than actually what I can do. And it, it just proves to how much abilities there are. And keep in mind, you're at level two. Um, you're at level two. <coughs> I know, there's going to be so many more, which I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm not using <coughs> a class to the fullest extent as much as, as much as I would like to. Well, we, yeah, so... we've only had like three sessions, so there's still time. Yeah. yeah. It also like how I built a gun, it took me fucking forever, and I finally finished it. And it blew up from a single hole. <laughs> you can thank Ordon for that. <laughs> mm hmm. Okay. Still... But to give another example, um, I made a system. Which I actually referenced earlier is about Cyberpunk. And it has a bunch of classes which I think are fairly good individually, but together they add a little bit too much love. Okay. So that brings me actually. Just an example. That's fine. That actually brings me to another question that I gotta ask actually all three of you because. Uh, the three of you are active in Elysium. I want you all to be brutally honest. If it, if you don't like it, if you hate it, say it outright. I, it's, it's how I adjust things. Because of the 13 tribes that are in Elysium, and each one of those tribes is now getting three subclasses each, aka what I'm calling them as a cause... Do you all think that's too much, or biting off more than I could chew, or too complex? What is your thoughts more on the amount of classes that are available in Elysium? So, 
<clears throat> I've actually done something similar. Let me quickly count something back to the cyberpunk system real quick. Sorry. You're good. And I'll come back. Back to me. Okay. Wait, okay, do you want to go back? Wait, hold on. What? Dart? Yeah, there's eight classes. Oh, he's counting. There's three... Yeah, I was counting. So that's why I said right. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. There's eight classes, and there's three subclasses to each of them. Some of them are really interesting and change up how a class works. The other one just changed their career skills, and wow, that was very dumb. <laughs> I really should have worked harder on those. So, you gotta make them interesting. <clears throat> so, it's a bit of both. Biting up a bit more than you could chew. Uh, I kind of want to see where it goes. Because keep in mind, there's technically, if we're going to count the causes, we'll just say they're their own individual class. There's 39 in total. To ch yeah, and I only had to work with eight different classes. All right. What about the other two? What's your thoughts on the amount of options I have for character classes for Elysium? Do you want to go right now, or do you want me to? Um, I guess I'll go. Considering, I know you're talking about all these different subclasses and shit. I gotta say, I wouldn't say it's not too much, but it's not too little either. I mean, I, I think you're doing fine. But um, it, I think it is a good idea to um, give us a range of the subclass you're going with or wanting to go for. Okay. I actually do like that. Alright. Spike? Honestly, I like how you uh, spaced out between three of them. So that makes me give more options. So say, for instance, uh, because I wanted to prescribe, that gives me three options to go through all three of them. And I could pick one which would have its individual traits and stuff like that. To, in my opinion, I like it. I like that kind of system. It's not too much because... Now, it's... How do I put this into words? It's isolated to that area. So it's like that subclass is isolated to the scribes, to the eye and stuff like that. In my opinion, I enjoy it. I like it. Well, right. I feel better about myself. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We're going to move on just a little bit quicker. All right, I'm going to combine two of these questions into one question. It has to deal with music, specifically scores in games. Now, in your opinion, can the musical score, the soundtrack of a game, turn a game that's mediocre at best into something worthwhile? Can the music alone in a game lift it up beyond what it reasonably should have. No. Uh okay, one for one for me, I think it just depends. That's all I'm gonna say. It just it just depends. I agree with Ryan. I mean so I like, say uh, no. I mean I no but I, the reason why I say that is only because of uh there is a chance that, you know, it might make seem things uh, a little bit better than uh, sometimes. But like I said, it all depends on the balance between what it is and what you do with it. Okay. Let's, um, let me give you an example of what I'm referring to. Let's just say something akin to bringing up a game we talked about earlier, The Binding of Isaac. What if that game, the gameplay itself is I'm not going to say repetitive it, it is but it's still the mechanics of the game are still solid enough but the background music that plays it's fun for the first little while but it kind of gets annoying after you go what if something more akin with the Binding of Isaac having a simple mechanic as it is had the amount of music or at least the skill level of music as they would for a Final Fantasy game would that make the Binding of Isaac any better, having a bigger and more orchestral score? 
That is also a no, because it does not fit the game's aesthetic at all. That point, I would agree That's with Jared. Fair. But like, it, like I said before, it just depends on how you go about it. Unfortunately, I'm I can't really have it. Oh, sorry, Gomer. No, uh, no, I'm saying that. That's all I'm gonna say. It. I agree with Dart, but at the same time, I stand by my statement saying that it just depends. Okay. All right. I left that question a little wide open. I apparently left it too wide open. That's fine. All right. We're reaching. Hey, anyway, you were saying Spike. Spike, they get the uh, never got the answer. Spike. Oh, sorry. Um. I, unfortunately, <laughs> no, I was just going to say, unfortunately, I can't really answer your that statement there because oh. I haven't played either of those games as much as I kind of want to get into Final Fantasy. I highly uh, recommend I, it, I, sir. Yes, I, I kind of wanted to. But Final of Isaac, I've never heard of. But I also agree. Ow! Right. Yeah, that can... I, I can understand, like, not playing these games just because it's never showed up in your... How have you never heard of The Binding of Isaac? Never heard of it. He's had to at least have seen it. No, I've never at all heard heard of it. And if I have, it's completely gone from my memory. I know that pain. Um, but no, I agree with Ryan. And sorry to drag this on. Um, You're okay. I agree with Ryan. It depends on what the scenario is, what type of game it is. If it's constantly repetitive, music ain't gonna change that much. But if it, it if it's different in slight areas but it has like the epic battle music or something like that it can make the game more interesting and can actually save a game from just being very dull okay you brought up D&D now like my brain's turned off <laughs> <laughs> alright this is the final section for the questions that I have there's only a couple here and again I'm only going to read off a couple more than we're going to call it just because it is getting late for Spike so we're going to move this along. All right. Is a romantic interest vital for a good story? No. no. That was fucking no. quick. Jesus. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, it doesn't always have to be about the love. Man. It doesn't have to be. <coughs> I'm choking on a fry. <coughs> oh, what? <my>, you okay? <coughs> I'm good. You're right. I'm okay. I'm good. Continue. <laughs> I feel like we shouldn't continue until we know you're okay. I agree. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Are you sure? Yep, I'm good. I just did not expect both Dart and Ryan to say, nope, just immediately to call me off guard. <laughs> I'm good. <coughs> Some words. <laughs> <coughs> Um, breathe, man, breathe. I have, hang on, let me get let me get my actual breathing ability. Hang on. That better not be a vape. It is. Of course it is. Hey, it's got nicotine in it. Nicotine relaxes my body. And see, I'm not coughing no more. <coughs> I'm good. Okay. Oh, you'll be coughing in a few years. <laughs> All right. Do continue as I regain consciousness. Well, I think my flat out no says it all. Yep. Doesn't need to. Yep. No. Honestly, like I said before, no only because that it doesn't... Uh, not every game or storyline have to involve a woman or a man as a love interest. Hell, it could be about someone avenging their daughter's death or something like that. It doesn't always have to be about the love someone feels for another. It's, it's, I, you know, I could have said that was a tired trope. Fuck. I, okay, let me let me rephrase it then. Does it make the story better? Let me rephrase it that way. Does having a love interest make the story better? Not always. No, because sometimes there's idiots that don't understand romance stories. I agree on that one for sure. Yeah, I agree with that too. Yeah. Alright. Spike, uh, is that pretty much you just in... Uh... Oh, no, no. I, I agreed with what Dart said at the start. Yeah, no. I didn't think of those. Okay. 
Now, this one I'm going to have... This next question I'm going to have to be... I have to explain for a second. The question is, does philosophy have a place in video no. games? No. 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 I hate philosophy. No. No? No. R no. Really? No. All right. You can... Honestly, I can go on hours about how much I hate philosophical debates and philosophical philosophy <laughs> itself. <laughs> Genuinely, uh, it's the bane of my existence. Okay, but uh, here's I bring this up before it didn't go well. <laughs> okay, let me rephrase this to why I was going to give an example before I just got bombarded. The reason is now. How many people here have beaten the game Soma? Never heard of it. I'm Never starting heard. to play through it, but I mean, like I said before, I couldn't get past that damn little robot that's, uh... Oh, in the well, ship? Yeah. Okay. Well, the reason I ask, I don't necessarily mean philosophy in the way of the mental questions. I mean philosophy in the broad terms. Essentially asking these bigger questions. Games that make you ask bigger questions soma is the reason i bring up that game is because throughout it this is not much of a spoiler but okay it's a little spoiler uh fairly early on in the game you discover that your main character from the start of the game the character you play as his consciousness will say gets transferred to another body hundreds of years in the future I believe it's hundreds. But he begins to play through the game again towards the beginning of it, not realizing he's in a different body. He just thinks, all of a sudden, I just teleported somewhere. Come to find out, he is actually using an exoskeleton-type robot body. And his brain consciousness has been converted into a digital format to where it now controls the body. As far as the character is concerned, he is the exactly who he is. And it's just the body that's different. So the question in Soma is, what does it mean to be human? And that's what I mean by philosophy in games. These bigger questions being asked. Does that belong in games? A game that... Wow. You have just ruined Soma for me. I hate Soma now. <sighs> you weren't gonna play it. I was watching a Let's Play of it every now and again, every few months. I, it's my point exactly, sir. You weren't gonna... I'm gonna say, this occurs fairly early on in the game. I didn't spoil anything at end game wise Like, you get up to, like, episode 2 or 3 in a Let's Play, you, you just heard what I said. Oh, then I, I guess it just flew over my head because I was thinking more, Ooh, cool, Wonder Water Robots! I actually, yeah, I agree with him on that one. But that's the, that's the question. Does... Can, okay, I'll probably rephrase the question no. entirely. Can video games be a medium for people to start thinking more philosophical? No. Okay, that's Dart's answer. Um, I'd say... If only if it doesn't weigh too heavily on what they're conveying possibly okay possibly but then again my answer is still leaning toward no spike same answer yeah um i mean it it can i don't know i'm gonna say no i'm gonna leave my answer at that philosophy is dumb and boring no nah, i'm not i'm not <laughs> I like philosophy. Well, it's dumb and boring. <laughs> yes and no. Alright. Well, judging by the reaction I got out of that question, I sure as hell am not going to ask the next question. <laughs> the original the question I was going to ask before, I'm just going to entirely scrap it. Is there a place in games for politics and religion? No. Yes. That's what I thought. <laughs> I figured that would have started a few fights, made an interesting commentary, so we're going to move on. I said yes. Oh, you said yes? I said yes. Out of everybody here, I figured you would have said hell no. 
<laughs> well, honestly, it's impossible to escape it, so why not just embrace it? Like, as much as you like to kick and scream when I say this, or anyone who wants to, uh, Bioshock is a criticism of Ayn Rand's uh, governmental system. What? Uh, um, Ayn, Ayn Rand is a book, or a book. Ayn Rand is a book. Ayn Rand is an, au is a person. Is an author who wrote a book called The Fountainhead uh, and Bioshock, the game, is... I'm, I'm going to say loosely, or at least the belief of uh, Andrew Ryan's uh, form of government, form of government, is loosely based on what was in the Fountainhead, I believe. Es yeah. Essentially, uh, let me... Okay, Spike, please say yes to this question. Have you played Bioshock? I've watched that plays of it. And mildly pissed, but not too bad. Okay, but at the very beginning, uh, when you get into the bathosphere and drop down underwater to go to ra um, to go to Rapture, um, there's a little like presentation that shows up on a projection screen. Is the man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? <coughs> and it goes off like, No, says the man in the Vatican, it belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow, it belongs to everyone. Just going back and forth. And then he talks about he rejected these claims uh, and created his own form of government. Uh, we'll call it a government party, if you wish. Um, where the more you work, the more you enjoy the fruits of your labor kind of mentality if I'm understanding it correctly. Uh, please do correct me if I'm wrong. But Yes. Yeah, yeah, I got it right. Screw you, philosophy teacher in college. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, that's ooh, probably the game I was going to give an example of when asking this question was Bioshock having the I think it, I can't remember the name of it directly. It's like objectivism or something like that. I believe so. I, I don't call me on I that. I can't remember. But this was like started back with, with Ayn Rand and her book, The Fountainhead, which actually she's more of a popular uh, author than I originally thought because uh, I know I'm dating myself here. Have any of you heard of a band called Rush? No. I have seen yeah, their yeah. silly logos. Okay, I'm going to ignore the silly logo part. But <laughs> there's an album they have called 2112. That entire album is a story, and that story was based off of one of Ayn Rand's books as well. I don't know. I thought that was just an interesting little tidbit. Yeah, but back to my original point. Um, whether you like it or not, Bioshock is a direct criticism of that governmental system. And there's no way around I it. I can agree with that. There's no way to fix it. Mm -hmm we have to live with whether you agree with it or not which I'm not going to point where I am but you know it's a crazy system to me I love how you get to say this and if this if for some weird reason my channel blows up and people watch this video they're going to be screaming in my comments and you don't have to worry about a thing yep <laughs> because he doesn't have a channel no, do you not have a channel dart or I don't okay I never knew if you did or not, so that's what I asked. Okay. All right. Since technically we skipped over that question, even though we just answered it, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, let's see here. Okay. I think somebody brought this up earlier in this conversation. Now, this is not just for video games. This is for, again, TV shows, books, movies, what have you. What deserves more attention in the creation process? The world lore, essentially building the world around them, or protagonist development? What should be more important? Now, honestly, I'm going to fly this back at you. I think that is an impossible question to ask. Because I'm... without a good world... You just have characters floating around in an empty space. But without good characters, you have this 
beautiful world but with no one in it. Right. I'm not asking. I'm not asking just for the sole focus of one. I'm asking what should most of the effort be put into? Because obviously you're going to have to have both. What is more important, the world around you, or the character arc of the character you play as? Let's let me put it this way: the world that you, this fictional world um, uh, has been created, and a lot of time has been spent on it. It is perfect. You have every understanding of how the system works. It makes sense. You even see a couple of points that has even altered your way of thinking. But the main character's story is a bit drab. Now, polar opposite, the character story is amazing, but the world you they live in is very kind of barren. Like, not much is going on. What would be more important to have? That was the question, I should say. Uh, okay. I don't then think then... I can still answer this. I think both of them are equally important. Need to be worked on both. Very well. That's fine. I agree with I agree, because there's... I mean, because whether you go between character development or where they're living and shit, I... It's... One's gonna fall apart without the other, eventually. But I agree with Dart. There needs to be a balance. Okay. Alright. Sorry, I just got a message from Sean. He's finally showing back up at his house, but we're almost done. Okay. No. Okay, sorry. No, you're fine. You can interview him, uh, you can interview him just a little <laughs> Nah, not tonight. <laughs> Getting too late. I gotta be at work in the morning. But, I got two more questions and we're gonna be done for the night. Alright. This is kind of personal to me just because of how I play video games and stuff like that, just because I am a completionist. But, in your guys' opinion, what separates the concepts of challenging and difficult when it comes to games? I think it's more of when is something unfair? Like, yeah. the developers deliberately make something super unfair to the player and say, you can do it, but it's going to take you some considerable effort at the tongue in their cheek. According to that, what you just said, where would something like Dark Souls, like that series, where would that fall into that category for you? I would say Dark Souls is meant to be hard. So there's never any tongue in cheek moments where, oh, haha. Got you, except for the Capra Demon that can eat me. Uh, Wait, you had issues with the Capra Demon? Yeah, when it just jumps at you? What? See, I'm going to be honest with Dark Souls. All that game is, is I have a sword. I'm going to do a roll. I'm going to roll again. Stab, roll, roll, heal, stab, roll, roll, heal. Constantly. Yeah, once you know the rhythm, it's over for the enemy. There's no, like, difficulty. It's a challenge. It's not difficult. But if you don't know that rhythm, it can feel like both, or it can actually feel like it's completely over. It depends on how you tackle the game, per se. But it's always, at that point, it's the player's inability to do it. They can get it through time, but they need to, to put in the time. Brian? Honestly, I don't know how to answer it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, nothing for me, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right. This one, this one's going to be more akin to this next question. It's going to be a little bit more... I'm not going to say a yes or no question because I try to write these questions as a not be a yes or no, even though you've done that twice now, motherfuckers. Um... <sighs> All right, this uh, this one I actually wrote with um, the concept of D and D and Elysium in mind. So Dart, as a DM and as a player, you can kind of have both perspectives on this. Is it better to be in the dark 
when it comes to the story. Now, what I mean by that is you just jump in not knowing what's going on and then slowly little bits of information get uh, presented to you and it just essentially completes the puzzle. Or is it simply better to say, you are this person, this is the bad guy, go kill. I believe that important character information is necessary. But world information, like how when I told you that there's something going on in the north, I know exactly what's going on. And in fact, another player knows exactly what happened in the north. But they haven't told you and I won't tell you. I think that is important make the distinction okay because his character ha has been from the north and he knows someone that knows what happened i love how you say this character like me and spike don't know exactly who you're talking about i might be talking about spike hmm. sorry i'm, I'm not gonna... but you know, adam, whatever I, adam you and i you know adam you and i must have words here shortly son <laughs> oh yeah i still gotta have i still gotta have a talk to talk with um sean's character <clears throat> you need to talk to a lot of people. i i am currently i beg your pardon voice in my head uh for people who don't know what i'm doing this is the character voice i gave my character upon but I am currently running a mercenary group that was just plopped on my lap in session one. I am now in charge of three idiots. I'm sorry, two idiots. I don't know about Liam just quite yet. But I swear to you that I am I am trying to figure this shit out. It's just been one session. Okay, I'm good. I mean, <laughs> like, we did kind of just throw that on you. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. Sean was not at the start of the campaign uh, for Dart's campaign. So, here's the thing. If he wasn't there, realistically, I think Sean would have taken charge on that one. And that just... He was actually supposed to. Whoopsie! Oh, well. If... If Vapon dies, um, he can take over. Alright, that's fine. Alright, uh, Spike and Ryan? <sighs> okay, wait, I forget, what was the question? <laughs> we're almost done, wow, right. we're almost done, I promise. Now, th again, when I wrote this question, it was mostly just from the RPG aspect of it, like Dungeons and Dragons, Elysium, the Star Wars campaign, stuff like that, that Dar did. When it comes to the story, is it better to be in the dark and have little bits of information sprinkled to you throughout the entire time, or is it better that you know everything and you just need to go do it? Um, okay. I would say maybe um, in the dark just a little bit, considering you don't want to expose too much in the beginning. But I do appreciate the aspect of gathering information while you're in the dark and uh, makes it, I would say, fun, more fun that way, but gives you more to think about before you jump into the next situation. Okay. But, yeah. Spike? I think, yeah, no, I agree. I think it should be sprinkled to you because when you play something like Dungeons & Dragons, if you know that information, it's not really that much fun if you just go, it's not really, it kind of cuts the fun because then you can't exactly go to, I don't know, an NPC, which to be honest, knowing the group that we run in, anything can happen when you just talk to a simple NPC about a simple subject. It could get transformed completely and could backfire on us. There's so many more possibilities you can have by that one simple interaction. Okay. Not just right. that, it also makes the story a lot more interesting. How you're finding pieces of the puzzle and putting it all together. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I kind of wrote that last question because that's how I write and I kind of wanted to get your point of view on it, see if I was doing anything good, but yay, I feel good about myself again. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. 
Well, that went a lot longer than I thought it would have. I apologize greatly, Spike. Um, oh, don't worry. Dude. All right. But unless anybody has any other comments or something they want to refer to back on previous questions, I believe this is the end for this session anyway. So does anybody have anything they want to say before this ends? Raven's hot. This has just been a general consensus uh, for the entire internet community, so that's just a fact at this point. Follow me on YouTube at Shadow Blackheart, please. <laughs> Where's my censor bar? Um... Fuck. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Spike? Uh, my apologies. Oh, God. I'm just half asleep at this point. Yeah, my apologies if I uh, had a stroke. During <laughs> had a stroke? <laughs> I am so tired I had a stroke. Yes, and my words are not making English sense. That's fine. Alright. So, thank you for joining us on the Creepy Cast. As again, I am joined by Dart, aka Dark Lord Sprinkles, aka 30 other names. Sparkles. Sparkles, thank you. I I keep wanting to say sprinkles for some reason. I don't know why. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, as well as joined by as well as joined by Ryan, aka Shadow Blackheart. Do follow him on YouTube. Yes, please. What's up? Goodbye, guys. <laughs> I should also say subscribe, but not follow. But same thing. Yeah. Okay. As well as Spike, aka Spike. Mm, that was it. <laughs> eh, you were here. I swear. All right. <laughs> Thank you for joining us with the Creepy Cast. As always. Hope you all have a good one.